In this video segment, we're going to take a look at creating the second floor for the Grandview Build House for Homes project. I'm going to go through and create that floor, show you how to change the different wall types, take a look at the floor and ceiling structure. There is a deck balcony off of the front of the house that is lowered into the garage a little bit, and then I'm going to go through and place the stairs in the project. You can see in the completed plan, the second story only covers partially over the main floor. The other thing is we're going to pull the front wall back from the garage and expose the balcony. We'll step that down. You can see in our section view where that steps down and uses a smaller framing member and then a concrete slab. So let's go into the plan and get started. From the previous video segment one, we'd created the main floor plan. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and create the second floor from the build menu and select build new floor. From here, I'm going to drive the second floor from the main floor below, and then we'll make corrections to it. I'm also going to set the ceiling in an 8-foot ceiling. I'll go ahead and raise that as a tray ceiling when we get to the ceiling portion of the video. Now the second floor generated over the entire structure and I want to pull those back so that it's just kind of over the garage and then in this area back here for a stairway. I'm going to do that work in the floor plan view. My floor indicator is on floor 2 and if I press F9 on the keyboard it will actually toggle on the floor below and I can use this as a guide to make the adjustments in the walls. I'm going to go ahead and begin with just pulling these walls back over the garage section so that we can create that shape and then we'll go ahead and make some adjustments adjustments. Use my wall tool, my interior wall tool over here and just pull these walls back and over the top where I'm going to form that stairway. Now the rest of these walls I'm going to go ahead and select and remove them because they're just not needed. So I'm just going to draw a marquee around those and delete and I'm just going to delete a few other walls right in here. One slight adjustment, let's pull this wall over and then I'm going to press F9 on the keyboard so we can just focus on this second floor. Now a few things one, I want to create a railing in this area right here. I'm going to use the break tool and create a notch right in this area right here. And for this wall that will be underneath of the roof, I'm going to change that to an interior six wall. Go ahead and select that. And then for this wall in here, I'm going to change that to a railing that's going to be an open railing that will overlook the stairway. So again, I'll open up that wall type. I'm going to change it to an interior railing too. And on the railing panel, let's go ahead and specify that it is a railing. I'm going to check the box here for panels. And then on the newels and balusters section, we'll set it at 36 inches. I want the top cap to be quite wide, so I'm going to set that at 4.5 inches. And for the panel type, I'm going to choose the library and browse out to the library and find a panel. Under architectural, I'm going to come down. I'm going to find this wide slat panel. Go ahead and select OK. You can see the preview of it. Notice my top cap needs to be adjusted to the same width so I'm going to go ahead and set the width of that to the same width as my newels at four and a half inches and then I'm going to change the height of it to be quite small. Those are all the changes for the railing. One more thing you may want to do with that railing is display the newels in here. You can come in and underneath the newels and balusters panel uncheck the use defaults and if I draw the newels and the rails you'll be able to see those in the plan view. Sometimes you may not be able to see those. That's because the fill style is a solid color. If you set that to be a transparent color, or at least maybe 50% transparent, you'll be able to see through the rail and see your balusters. Let's go ahead and select that and close the dialog. And you'll notice you can see those in this floor plan view. We'll end up putting a doorway in here so that we can go down into the stairs when we get to the stair portion. Now one method to make sure your walls are exactly aligned. Let me press F9 on the keyboard again. When I draw these walls, if they're not aligned and they're very close, you highlight the wall, you'll see an indicator in the very bottom of your menu here, align with wall below. And that will exactly align that wall. If it's exactly aligned, notice that tool has disappeared, you won't see it. I'm going to do the same thing on this wall and align it below. That way they're exactly stacked. And now I just need to reconnect that wall and then make a slight adjustment back here. And then I'll go ahead and turn off the reference by turning F9 on the keyboard off and once we have that set we can now use our automatic dimensions and make some adjustments here. Using the automatic exterior dimension tool we'll go ahead and place those dimensions and I want to pull these walls back 
in the front here so that I can create a balcony. I'm going to go ahead and select the wall and I want that to be 18 feet so I'm just going to enter in 18 feet. We'll pull that back and over on this side I'm going to select this wall, highlight the dimension and I'm going to set that to be 16 feet and then we'll need to just reconnect that wall. We'll just pull that in and then we can go ahead and update our dimensions. Now one last step before we take a 3D view I'm going to select all of these outer walls and I'm going to change the wall type to a board and batten underneath the wall types. Let's go in and I'm going to change it to a board and batten. Then we can go out to our 3D view and take a look. Okay, in the 3D view you can see that the area back here that's going to be for our stairway, if I click in that area, open up the room by double clicking, there is a room type called open to below and that will remove the platform out of that room and when we draw the stairs we'll be able to get the stairs up through that platform. Now the next step is to draw a railing out in the front here and then we'll lower the floor platform. Let's go back to the plan view. To create the balcony in front of the house above the garage, let's press F9 on the keyboard and I'm going to use the deck railing tool and just trace over the wall below. Now before I do that, let's set some properties in that deck railing tool that will match what we need. Underneath of the wall types, I want the wall thickness of this to match exactly the wall below. I'm going to change that actually to a siding, lap siding wall. And If you zoom in a little bit, this isn't going to be a deck, it's going to be a balcony. So below here is going to fill in with lap siding. You'll be able to see that in a 3D view when we take a look. Under the general panel, you'll notice the thickness now matches it at nearly 7 inches. On the rail style, let's make sure that it is a railing and it has panels. Under the newels and balusters, We'll change the height of this to be 42 inches with a width of 4 inches. And then on the panels portion, let's go in. I'm going to choose a cable style. You can see the preview of that. We want to draw the newels and also the rails. I'll set the transparency to be at 50% so you can see through that. And then finally on the rails section, let's go ahead and set that to be the same width at 4 inches. Now we've got all the settings in here. Let's go ahead and um, let me remove the dimensions temporarily. Let's just use the dimension tool. Draw a marquee around all of the dimensions. Press delete. I'm going to use that railing, deck railing tool and we're just going to trace over the top of these walls. So I'm just going to trace right over the top of these walls. We'll come in here and if I'm off slightly we'll just use the alignment tool and correct those. Looks like I'm probably off right in this area so let's use this. We'll pull it over. If it's not close enough you'll see the alignment tool down below and it looks like all of these walls are actually aligned. Now the last thing is notice that the deck automatically came in here as a deck room. This actually isn't going to be a deck. Decks in Chief Architect come with special framing. I'm going to change this to be a balcony. You'll notice in the 3D view what the deck view look where it actually has framing below it. By changing this from a deck to a balcony you'll notice the change in here. It will remove that framing and also notice what happened by changing that wall to a siding 6 it matched the lap siding down below. Now the next thing we want to do in the structure here is we want this to drop down because we'll need to support this deck and we want it to be slightly lower than in the main room so we can make sure we don't get any water inside. Let's go back into the deck room and what I want to do is underneath the structure panel let's come in here into the floor structure and floor finish and make some modifications. Currently the floor structure consists of 3 quarters inch subfloor and a 14 inch eye joist. What I want to do is let's Let's use the insert tool here and in the top I'm going to set this to be at four and a half inches. This is going to be a concrete layer. Let's go out to the library and choose our concrete. I'll just grab a basic concrete color here that has a little bit of brown in it and on the second layer I'm going to go ahead and set that up to be an eighth of an inch. That's going to serve as an air gap. Again I'll choose the material for an air gap. You can also use the search and type the term in here. We'll go ahead and make that an insulation air gap and then on the final material let's go ahead and change that to be nine and a half inches for the floor joist and you can see the total value is now fourteen and an eighth down from 14 and 3 quarters. Let's go ahead and accept these changes. And the final thing is, is we're not going to use the floor finish since we have concrete in here. We'll go ahead and remove that material and once we close the dialog you'll see the result. We now have concrete and the structure set up for the balcony. A little bit later I'm going to show you how to draw the supporting beam underneath of that wall. I'm going to use the material painter and change that railing style color and I've got a color in my library called moss. I'm going to go ahead and choose that and then I'm going to come in here and apply that onto the railing. I'm in object mode which if you look in the lower left hand corner of your screen, I'll just mouse over it here in just a second, you can see that the object mode versus component mode if you're just 
applying it to part of the railing or the entire room, you can set that for your material painter. Next, I'm going to create a belly band that will go just below the deck railing and then cover up the two different materials off of the siding mix over here. The easiest way to do that is in your floor plan view. If you click very near the outside of the room, you'll see a gray shaded area. And when you get that exterior room, there's a few buttons down here. One is make a room molding pie line. You can select that. You can choose a molding from here. And then we'll just go through and we'll try uh, setting it uh, at 111 just above the 9 foot ceiling. On the moldings, let's go out and choose a rectangular molding out of the library here. Go into the core catalog and find a profile that's just a simple square profile rectangular. And let's go ahead and set that to be 11 and 3 quarters by one inch and usually all it doesn't really matter extrude to the inside or the outside it will depend on what that profile looks like and where your molding is and I think that's it let's go ahead and choose OK and then back in the 3d view notice that the molding didn't go around the outside of that railing because it is intelligent and in trying to think you wouldn't want one there it does the same thing for window casings but you can select that edge profile there's an add button down here and you can come around and add those moldings back in for each one of those segments we'll just click the add button and see if I can get it in this view click add all the way around here and we'll just rotate around so that we can see all of the different components for it and I think this last segment right in here will select that edge and add that molding profile back in there so that's a way you can create a belly band pretty quickly for that area basically create a divider for your siding now the next thing I want to do is to show the process of how I've extended my deck you see the concrete slab on the balcony extended that past the railing typically your deck material will go only to the railing or your room material will only go to that railing. You can see how mine's extended a few inches and what I've done there is just used a polyline solid. So let me just show you that real quick. Sometimes if you're doing decks or balconies you need it to extend past the balcony. I'll show you how I solve that. You can see in the model that we have the deck is right at that material, right at that railing. Inside of the balcony on the plan view, let's go ahead and click inside that room. I'm going to use the tool to generate the shape that I'm after. It's called Make Room Polyline. You can see that it's created the shape and now I can actually convert that to a polyline solid. That way I don't have to draw out the exact shape of it. So I'll convert that to a polyline solid and then we'll set the elevation of it. For the thickness, we'll set it at four and a half inches, and I'm going to change the elevation reference from the floor, that's from the subfloor, and then we'll set the floor to top just above the top of it, and that way we'll be able to see it. And you can see that it has filled the space. Again, if you just want to click on this and pull it out, you can easily pull that out and make whatever adjustments you want to on that polyline to extend it out past the edge of that railing. Next, let's take a look at creating a set of stairs between the two platforms, and I'm going to do that from the floor plan view from floor one. Let's go back on to the floor plan view, go down to floor one here, and this is the area right here that we want to create those stairs. Now to place the stairs between the two platforms, we're going to do that right in this area. The first thing I want to do is actually I want to create a section view. We've lowered the garage 24 inches, and I want to make sure that my platform heights are correct before I go in the stair tool. Let me use my back clip cross section view and cut a section right through this area. Now using the end to end dimension tool let's go ahead and create a couple of dimensions. One will go from the rough finish down to the subfloor in here. That's eight foot one and an eighth which is exactly what we want and then we'll do the same thing in this area for the garage. And again that's 24 inches higher than the other floor because we'd lowered it 24 inches. And I want to pull this down 24 inches, this floor platform, so I don't have such a high garage and it will also minimize the height of the house. To make that adjustment, let's do that in our floor plan view up on floor two. I'm going to select the main room in here and in the structure panel, I want to make that adjustment right in here. I'm going to take the ceiling below and I'm just going to subtract the 24 inches, press the tab key so it does the calculation, and then I'm going to make sure that the rough ceiling is using the default. Once I've done that, I'm going to use the Select Same Load Same tool and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select the ceiling elevation and also the floor elevation. Load those into the Apply button and then we'll apply that onto the balcony and onto the open below. So those same values for the ceiling and floor height are the correct back in a section view. You can see that we pulled that floor platform down 24 inches. 
Now before I place the stairs, I'm going to double click on the tool and I'm going to set some defaults in the interior stairs so when I place them they have the correct attributes that I want. First thing is I'm going to go ahead and set those to be 48 inches in width. I'm going to come down here on the railing style and I'm going to remove the railing at the wall and I'm also going to remove any transitions. I'm going to change the style for the balusters to panels and then I'm also going to include a bottom rail and raise that rail as well. On the newels and balusters panel, let's go ahead and indicate that it has newel posts. You'll be able to see these updates as we make changes in here in this preview panel. I'm going to change the width to be three and a half inches and then the spacing will set to be four feet. Panel type, we're going to browse out to the library. Under the architectural fences and railings, I'm going to come down here, find the wide slats. These are the same railings that we used for the railing on the second floor. And then we're going to draw the newels and balusters so we see those in our plan view. Again, changing the transparency so we can see through that rail will allow us to see those posts. And then finally on the rails panel here, I'm going to change the height of that rail to one and a half inches by four inches in width. Now I'm finished loading all of the defaults into the stair tool. When I place a stair, it's going to have those properties in there. And it used to be in Chief Architect X8, you, to draw a set of L stairs, you draw one segment, come over here and draw another segment and click in between. We now have a L-shaped stair tool. Let me undo that. Using that L-shaped stair tool, you can choose to either have them clockwise, counterclockwise, or specify a gap. Let's go ahead and accept the clockwise. And when you come in here and place a stair, notice how I move my cursor around. It will indicate which way it's going to go. I have a little bit of close quarters up here. It may be difficult to get that exactly in here. Once I have it positioned, I'll just go ahead and click to place those stairs. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull them back just a little bit. I had an indicator in here where I wanted that stair to stop and then I'm going to go ahead and pull it back to the top of the platform. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stair attributes. Let's open the stair back up and take a look under the general panel. You can see that in the stairs if they didn't reach the platform there would say make best fit would be activated. So the stair does reach the platform. You can see what your riser height is down here. If I uncheck that button you can see that that's 6 and 11 sixteenths for your riser heights and then you can also see what the length is for those stairs. Let me close that. What I want to do in here is I want to actually come in here and I want to pull this stair so that it actually goes over the top of this wall. So I'm just going to pull this over. Once I have that positioned over the wall, let's go into a 3D view and take a look. And you can see the way the stairs have now extended over the wall and cut the wall. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see that this end cap here is uncovered. And sometimes when you have wall intersections, you may get situations like that. The way I solve that is to take a section view and just draw a polyline solid over it. And I'll just show you that real quick. Using my section camera, I'm just going to take a small section right in that area. And then using the polyline solid tool, I'm just going to come in here and we'll make this kind of big so we can see it initially. And then we'll just snap that to the edge of the wall and we'll snap the other side to the edges of the wall as well. And I'm just going to set the thickness of it to be a half inch to match the sheetrock and then go back into the 3D view and we'll paint it. Let's go back into the 3D view. Using the material eyedropper, we'll just grab the paint off of the wall put it on there and then I'll just pull it down to the top of the wall. So when you find intersections like that, sometimes I'll use that tool. In the layout sheet that I ended up doing for the stair, I have a very small second floor plan so I also included the second floor plan at a smaller scale. You can see my elevation view for my stairs. I also put in my 3D view of the stair, a rail photo that I wanted, and then the stair detail that complies with the code for the local building area. To generate this stair section detail and to get your headroom, let me show you the steps that I use to typically do that. On floor one, I'm going to use the back clip cross section camera and I'm just going to create a small slice right in this area. In the section view, right here in this wall, indicates our headroom. When we do the framing, I'm going to end up putting a beam that will come down into there to carry that wall. In the meantime, I'm going to draw a line that will represent our six foot eight or minimum headroom right in this area. And then I'm going to also draw a line, if we zoom in a little bit further, I'm going to snap onto the top of the tread and pull that down onto the nosing of the tread that will indicate where that's going to intersect. Using the end-to-end -end dimension tool, 
I'll go ahead and run a dimension line from the top of that wall down to the line and then I'll make sure that I select the line and then I'll put in six foot eight. Now where this line intersects in here will represent where our headroom is at 6 8. So you can see that our headroom in this case has enough clearance and then you can send that out to your layout and again the way I've done that is to add some text annotations. You can see the beam when I've come in here and added that framing component and then other information that may be required for the tread and riser height information. Well, that wraps up creating the second story for the Grandview Build Home. To kind of recap, we went through the process of creating an 8-foot floor above the garage. That garage had been lowered 24 inches, and so we made the particular adjustments. We created different wall types, including the balcony wall type. We also stepped the back balcony framing members down so that we got proper water control. And then also we wrapped it up by putting our stairs in and creating our headroom. Thanks for watching the video.